glad I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to a special presentation of Anime Club After Dark. Joining me tonight, I just have our chivalry of Shota Shotaro. Can't host, will travel. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a dig at me? Uh, it's a double entendre. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, we'll go with that. The fact that I fucking flubbed my first attempt at doing this introduction. <laughs> But anyway, yes, this is our 11th episode review of Vinland, the Vinland Saga anime. So, uh, show. Yes, Alex. One of the first things, you actually noticed this before I did, so I'm going to start out with you on this. So one of the first things I want to talk about is um, Knut's character design got somewhat of a, a, an upgrade. I guess you would call it an upgrade uh, in this episode. So you want to talk about that? Yeah. So clearly Canute has started using L'Oreal Paris because he's worth it. He's got that silky smooth blonde hair flowing <laughs> in the wind, but seriously, uh, his hair does look significantly silkier than, um, the episodes before this. And also his helmet just looks brighter and shinier and like more intricately animated. He just looks like he got a character upgrade in the visual department that's literally the first thing i noticed when i saw this episode i'm like well someone's gonna have an important part yeah (laughs) of this show because you got a character buff i mean yeah do you think that's mostly because of the fact that he's becoming important to the story whereas before he was kind of just in the background clearly yes i obviously think that's the case especially since the episode ends on like a face reveal, I guess. That's a quote unquote face reveal. It's like he's been streaming for so long and we finally get to see his face. Oh my yeah, god. Uh, such a twitch <laughs> star. Is, you know what? You know what? It is kind of analogous to that. <laughs> to, use a, to use a modern analogy for it. You're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, overall, I, I, I definitely like, I like this character. I, I certainly like the fact that the helmet is drawn to be more ornate and it almost like it almost looks like i got polished that's because you're a femme queen and you're into those valkyrie helmets i mean i'm not gonna lie i do like Knut's character design a lot <laughs> for very personal reasons oh. but but moving on uh, i don't know i think it's great um it's great that he's gonna hopefully become more of a main character instead of just a background character that people talk about um Definitely looking forward to seeing what happens there. So I guess now we should talk about the actual meat of the episode. So a lot of this episode revolves around, you know, Ascalad has captured uh, Canute and uh, is taking him to, I forget where they said they were taking him. Actually, I don't remember either. You watched this more recently than I know. me. I know. I watched this last night before we actually did this. I should remember where they said we were taking it, but now I can't fucking remember. All I know is that the more I see of Thorkel, the more I actually really like him because he's so over the top. And even with this like with this episode, he's so over the top with everything. Because like, the, the, the episode itself starts out with... Thorkel and his men kind of reminiscing on, you know, who who's the better god? Canute's, you know, Christian Jesus or uh, Thor and Odin? Yeah, I, I love that back and forth between uh, Thorkel and Canute and, and Ragnar and, and all those people that he's captured because it just says so much about Thorkel just being so over the, like, gloriously over the top, almost like this... Um, I want to say it's like a bard from old like uh, fantasy novels and shit because it just he's so awesomely over the top that you just can't help but like him. I guess he's okay. I you, felt like the conver- like it? he's okay. I don't like find him endearing, but I don't find him like annoying. Uh, he's just neutral. I wouldn't use the word endearing, but I would, yeah, I, he's not, it's not annoying either, but I wouldn't necessarily use the word endearing. It's just enjoyable to see. I wouldn't really consider I'm not, I don't find him enjoyable to see, but I will say the conversation about like Odin versus the Christian God, the Christian God, which remains nameless. <laughs> Speaking of uh, 
anime tropes where characters don't have their names christianity um but (laughs) but that whole conversation i felt was a little forced it felt a little like unnatural like that wouldn't really be how vikings would talk about the christian god it feels more like how a historian would talk about the vikings talking about the christian gods so i don't know it felt a little awkward but it was like i get the point they were like they come from different religions blah blah yeah well i thought i thought the whole conversation was more just to show thorkel egging on the people that he'd captured oh i thought it was more of like a way to like drop as like setting i don't know I don't know. I, I just felt that it was just a way for Thorkel to gloat and say, ha ha, I, I captured you. Now you have to listen to my drivel. I guess. I don't know. I found, I found the, act, the actual conversation itself to be entertaining because he's just trying to get under people's skin, which he kind of does. Speaking <laughs> Especially of... when it comes to the priest. <laughs> well, before we get to that, speaking of religion, I what I found interesting about this conversation was that uh, he mentioned, or uh, Thorkel specifically, mentioned Valhalla and how mm. he's like, I don't really care about, like, who wins, who loses. I just want to die a glorious death, have a great battle, and go to Valhalla, which we know the characters have mentioned Valhalla before, like, in the earlier episodes when they were children, they were like, let's go to Valhalla, blah, blah. That was, like, not a great introduction. This was a much better introduction to Valhalla, the concept in Norse religion. I guess it's religion. In Norse culture. Um, because it really makes sense for Asgard and... Not Asgard. Ugh, they're all the same blonde people. Okay. <laughs> it really makes sense. <laughs> wow, that's that's not racist it at really all. It really makes okay. sense for Thorkel because, I mean, without the knowledge of what valhalla is he just seems like a crazy wacko which i guess he still is technically but with the knowledge of valhalla it, i feel like his character makes a lot more sense and it's, he's m- much more believable for being so off the wall and a lot of his actions make sense knowing that yeah. he doesn't want anything except to have a glorious death so that's why he makes so he, that's why he starts so much shit because he wants to make the biggest shit storm so he can go down like a badass. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it's also says something about actual Norse mythology because that was seen as the fast track to getting into Valhalla was to die in battle. And Thorkil tries to find ways over and over again to get himself into fights because he wants to die in battle. And like, and there's not that many other characters that are so gung-ho about Valhalla more than Thorkel, so um him mentioning it i don't did he specifically i feel like he specifically mentioned it mentioned valhalla um he did. was really appropriate and i like that yeah i it, it, it again it's another one of those things where the whole conversation itself just kind of plays into Thorkel's character and that's really why i think this conversation was there I know you really wanted to talk about the alcoholic priest. I did because it's something that's very Catholic and it's something what? that comes from. <laughs> what does that mean? So, no, I just, I, I have to explain it because it's someone who grew up around a lot of Catholic people. Like, the priest is specifically asked, which is better, Jesus or Thor? Or which, 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 you know, religion's God is better? And he, he looks with the most deadpan eyes and says, whichever one invented alcohol. Oh, if you're a Catholic, you understand why that's funny. Uh, I don't know. A lot of Catholics are drunk, so what can I say? I've never heard of that uh, stereotype I know, Personally, it, it, as someone who grew up around a lot of people who were, uh, shall we say, both religious and high-function alcoholics, I thought it was funny. Eh. I don't know. I, I know a lot of you will probably just look at it. It's like, well, this is some kind of anime thing. It's like, yeah, it kind of is, but it's also just funny. I also thought the joke was forced, just like everything else. But um, <laughs> I did enjoy. I want to know where they got such a big thing of alcohol, though. I did enjoy the just the general animation of the priest, like freaking out over his alcohol. 
like he was like having a conniption fit and i i enjoyed that it was animated his facial well. expressions are really well animated mm-hmm. yeah, it also it makes was, me feel like watch. there's something more to this like what what there's something there's clearly something more but i'm very interested in knowing like what the priest's deal is because he's such a quirky character like what the like it's a fucking you know the prince the prince's aide and then the drunk priest just like this is like the setup for a comedy like what it's almost like the you know x walks into a bar skit sure yeah, it kind of is. They they're like a ragtag group of people, like really scrappy group of people that have been forced together for some reason. It, it I don't know. It it's fun to watch though, because Definitely. they're all so different. It's very strange because this is like a very serious story. Like it's a historical war story, and then mm. it's just like these three random people are together. It's like okay, yeah. I don't know. I, I like it. I, I can see why some people would have a problem with it, though. Like you say, it, this is trying to set itself up to be a really ser- or a relatively serious story, and it's got these people who are acting, I guess comedic. the best way to say it is... not Huh? Comedic? Not, well, not necessarily comedic, but tropey. Um, and I don't know if it, it's necessarily trying to be comedic, though. Oh, come on. I mean, well, okay, the the the, the alcoholic priest. Okay, if it was yes. trying to be serious, then they would have kept more of the of the what do you call it? The prince's forces alive, and because then it would make sense to if you just like have like a bunch of the prince's close people. But to have just like we got a prince, an aide, and a priest, I'm like this just seems a bit, you know, like a comedy sketch. Doesn't it feel maybe. Like- I, I I guess I don't I, I just why did they keep the priest in... alive? Why did they kill everyone else and keep the priest alive? No reason. Why did they keep the aide alive? No reason. <laughs> they don't I need don't... those people alive. They could just just Plot? take the prince. <laughs> Whatever. It just, to me it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Maybe I I don't necessarily think it's intentional. If it is for comedic purposes, I don't think necessarily think it's intentional though. Uh, probably not. I agree. I don't think it's intentional. <laughs> So anyway, should we actually move on to what happens after the conversation? Yes. Now that we're halfway through this recording. Uh, <laughs> so so Thorkel comes up against Ragnar's forces, and they're like, hey, you know, we see you down there at the bottom of this hill. Uh, release Knut, or we'll attack you. But they don't actually want to attack because they think that they could actually they could end up accidentally hurting Knut. What they want to do is they want to get Thorkil to release Canute, so they make them think that they have a larger force than they really do. And so Thorkil uh, doing doing what I can only describe as some kind of four dimensional chess decides to release Canute, so that Ragnar's forces will attack them without any hesitation or reservation whatsoever. My- now, Ragnar, Ragnar <laughs> tries desperately to get his, his force, the forces that he does have, not to attack because they know that if they do, they're they're probably going to be outnumbered. And even if they're not outnumbered, Thor kills a beast that can kill people like like snapping their necks. <laughs> and then Thor kills just sitting at the bottom of this hill, just provoking them into attacking. Like, is this not some kind of four-dimensional chess going on or what? Honey, he just fucking evolved into a new stage of humanity. You know that meme <laughs> where there's the four stages or however yeah. many, and then you're like, you transcend into space and you become like a six-handed deity. That's, uh, yeah. that's not Asgalad, Thorko. That's Thorko. Yeah. That's that other I love how bitch. you keep I kind of love how you keep just mixing them up. Um, um but <laughs> this really like highlights how as quirky as Thorkel is, he is a better military commander than Ragnar, even though Ragnar mm-hmm. is te- technically like a moral righteous person, I don't know, allegedly. Um cuz Ragnar can't control his troops and mm-hmm. Thorkel can. So Thorkel is clearly a better tactician and leader than Ragnar. 
And this scene makes that very painstakingly clear. Yeah. I mean, the, the probably the best indicator of a good military leader is a mili- as a leader who's able to control their own troops. And I think if you can't control your own troops, you can't call yourself a good leader. Mm-hmm. And that's clearly something that's out of Ragnar's hand because Thorkill actually does end up provoking his forces into attacking. And then Thorkill proceeds to start massacring these troops. Granted, <laughs> Ragnar's whole thing that he was trying to do was predicated on Thorkill believing there were more of his troops than he actually had. By them attacking, they've revealed that they don't actually have more troops than Thorkill thought that they had. What idiots. Ragnar's troops are such... So (laughs) stupid. Yeah, it's also a testament to Thorkill actually training his men to fight better, too. I guess. I don't know. I think they're just bulky. Now, in 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 true Vinland Saga fashion, we have Askeladd on the sidelines here, directing things from afar. So Askeladd has this great idea. He's going to set the forest on fire. Oh, honey, don't in. tell the millennials. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this is not the Amazon. But uh, yeah, Askeladd has this brilliant idea to set the forest that they're in on fire so that Everyone's confused about who's fighting who. No one can see who's fighting who. And, and ideally, I, I think the idea was to be able to separate Knut and Ragnar and that group away from all the fighting and everyone else. Which is as kind of a great tactic if you think about it, but also not great because this fire also ended up killing not only some of Thorkill's men, but some of Ragnar's men as well. Well, Asklad don't give a fuck about Ragnar's men. <laughs> No, and it's it's great because like at, this is why I love the Askeladd as a character because you never really know what side he's on, but you always suspect that he's just on his own side. He doesn't give a shit about politics or, or what's going to happen. He's just out for himself, and it's like it's like he's playing the long game. Hmm. I still feel like that he's. Uh, what is he really? What does he really want? I don't know, but it's not for anyone's benefit but himself. Clearly, mm. but I feel like there's, I still feel there's more. Asklad is such a mystery, shrouded in an enigma, wrapped in a twinkie. No, uh, wrapped in a um, twinkie, <laughs> wrapped in a bear. <laughs> I I guess. Um, so anyway, so one of the things that Asklad does also do during this is he sends Thorfinn out to capture, quote unquote, capture and bring back the prince Canute to to him to Asklad. And Thorfinn goes out and does this, goes out on a horse into the fire. And so, it's like, all right. Before we go further with that, I just want to say that the whole idea of like a three way fight and all these different uh, motivations and all these different tactics all colliding all at once. Great um, plot. I don't know. Great plot. Great, line. It's great writing. Great writing. Um, exactly what I want to see from a war story um so i'm very happy that they did this sort of uh three-way uh mind game kind of scenario yeah Yeah, i I definitely hope we see more of this going forward like you know independent battles that start in one place and they all kind of converge into one like that it's so great when that's written really well it's it makes for some great storytelling yeah and i really hope we get to see more of this as it goes on but yeah um as i was saying so Thorfinn gets sent out to go capture and bring back Knut alive, preferably. Um, and one of the things that happens right after Thorfinn leaves is Bjorn, who has been pretty much absent for the last couple episodes, um, starts. he goes up to Asklad and he calls him out, basically, for sending Thorfinn on all these dangerous missions one after the other. Not because... He finds Thor that Askeladd finds Thorfinn expendable, but because Askeladd has come to trust Thorfinn, do you think Bjorn's right? And well, that's what I don't know if you've been saying it, but I know I've been saying it before on one of these previous talks that Askeladd trusts Thorfinn because it doesn't make it's not consistent with his actions if he's just using him because he's expendable. And now Bjorn is like, "Bitch, let me call you out." Bitch, we listened to Anime Club After Dark and they told us that <laughs> you've been lying to us. And, you know, 
clearly, I've already stated that I think he trusts Thorfinn, and I will state it again, that he does trust Thorfinn, and Bjorn knows it. I I definitely I think I think there's a lot to be said for that. I I think you 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 have you you've said it before on this podcast that that it's not out of a sense of him being expendable. It's out of a sense of Askeladd actually trusting Thorfinn. And I do think you're right. I think that I don't think that Askeladd necessarily believes that, but it's still true. It may be something that he can't tell himself. Or at least it's not, uh, he's not 100% expendable. It might be a more complicated, uh, I don't know, relationship, but he's mm. not 100% expendable. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I, can we talk about one of the greatest character entr- entrances we've seen so far? Go ahead. <laughs> Thorfinn coming in on the flaming horse to oh save Canute. Oh my god. I love that Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming in on a fucking Rapidash. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Um, I just, like the way it was animated was really great. The way it was done, and then like he fucking leaps off the horse and does like a superhero landing. It's fucking amazing. So much edge. So so much. So much superhero edge. I love it though. <laughs> I can't say oh, I did. I don't love it because I do. I do. I I loved it too. I thought it was probably one of the best character. It's certainly the best character entrance I've seen so far in this anime. It's and I I it might be one of the best I've ever seen ever. Okay, that's a lot to say, but better than yeah, it is. You know what? I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> um, but then the mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. No. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say then the episode essentially ends with Thorfinn confronting Thorkel, um, and then Thorkel going like, "Oh, you gotta be careful with him. He took two of my fingers off." <laughs> yeah, I really then, like the whole um, that whole scene. They animated the fire really well. I like the hmm. um, atmosphere and everything. That was great uh, from a visual standpoint. And normally, what Thorkel did in like very typical tropey villain fashion of i won't get you this time i will get you another time maybe next time my pretty normally that i would find that really uh bad writing but because we talked about valhalla earlier in this episode it makes a lot of sense and to me i don't find that um poor writing i find that i find it very appropriate and i find it yeah I'm okay with that. So, do you think that do you think that Thorkill wants to fight Thorfinn one on one again at some point? And I that's think why Thorkill wants away? to groom Thorfinn into whoa whoa a moon. whoa whoa. <laughs> that's a little much. Okay, but like, like actually, like he just wants to, like, improve Thorfinn, like train, like okay. mentor him. Oh, it's okay. Unky. It's Unky Thorkill. Uncle Thorkel. It's oh your my dad's God. brother. You're not making this analogy any mother. less sexual. You know that, right? Uh, I didn't even think about that. Where's your mind? Clearly not where yours is. Gosh, you're, do you need to talk about a few things, Alex? Were you hurt as a child? Yes. Anyway. Oh, God. He's not being serious. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> um, but in the end, Thorfinn does end up saving Canute and bringing him back to Askeladd, and that's kind of how the episode ends. Just with that, I mean, we got a face reveal of Canute finally. So he's a woman. Yeah, it's what everyone thinks, <laughs> and that's it. I mean, that that was episode eleven. What'd you think? I liked it. It's good. Well, okay. Too. The first scene of them dragging Canute along was a little too long for me, but I did enjoy the fighting part. Yeah, I thought it was the like the the number one we mentioned it before. The way that whole sequence with the fight was written was really good. All three forces basically converging on the same point to fight. That was really well done. But actually, just the way that everything was animated in that was really good too. Yep. That I think. Yep. I don't particularly remember but i'm pretty sure um Dorkel massacring ragnar's forces was animated well yeah yeah it was i would definitely say it was 
So that was episode 11. Thank you all for dropping in to listen to us. We hope you enjoyed it because we always enjoy bringing this stuff to you. If you want to check out previous episodes of the podcast, you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Spotify. If you want to keep up with what we're doing, you can join us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, and our website. Shoot us an email if you have any questions or if you have ideas for topics you would like for us to talk about in the future. Links to all these things will be down below in the description. As always, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. I did all of that on one breath. Say goodnight, Joe. I'd let Askeladd burn my forest. <sighs> Every time. I'm not even, no, I'm not even going to do it anymore. Good night. Good night. Good night.